Hello and welcome to the Manager Q Sprint 168 review. This was a regular two week sprint. Uh, as usual, I'll give the overview. Kavya will update us on the UI, Adam on the providers, and today instead of Jason, Brandon will update us on the platform, the API, and the developer side. <clears throat> so, this sprint, we had uh, an uptick in the number of pull requests, both opened and merged. Uh, we were at 74 merged and 88 open uh, in the sprint. And uh, as you'll see um, going, uh, you know, in the presentation, you'll, you'll see that there were quite a number of enhancements um, and the uh, spread chart of, uh, you know, how many enhancements versus bugs. It was 42 enhancements versus 16 bugs. So really looking forward to hearing about all the enhancements that we had for the sprint, over to Kavya. Yep, thanks for that. Um, this sprint total 17 PRs got merged across UI repos. Out of 17, 10 are bugs, five enhancements, and so on. Uh, these are some of the important PRs among those. Next slide, please. This PR is uh, raised for subnet form, all provider creation forms, and cloud net for network form. Uh, whenever user is switching between providers, form is loading fine. But when the user, uh, when user is um, doing the selection, uh, sorry, when uh, when the selection is cleared by selecting a placeholder, below form is not clearing out, which is wrong. So Gilbert fixed that issue in this PR. Next slide, please. Uh, refreshed relationships and power states option was broken in the configuration manager page. So that is fixed in this PR. The, uh, also, the previous one is backported to the last code. Yeah, this 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 is also backported to last code. Next slide, please. Um, these two PRs are like related. Uh, in first one, carbon charts had has introduced a bug. So and resizing and some of our charts are broken completely. So I fixed that in the first PR and also completely removed resizing toolbar until they fix that bug. Then after that, I spoke to them and they fixed those bugs. Also, they did a couple of enhancements like up updating to D updating D3 package and all those things for cool new features. So uh, I raised another PR on top of the first one um, to fix all of those and putting that toolbar back and updating D3 package in our local as well. And that's it. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, this PR is for service UI for Ansible service log is not appearing in service UI, whereas it is showing up in our regular one. Nick fixed that issue in this PR and fixes like changing permission name to the right one. Uh, this is also backported to Lasker, Casper, and Yansa. Next slide, please. This PR is raised by a community user and health state is added to cloud volumes table and summary page. Next slide, please. Um, next slide, please. It is stuck. Um, I think um, there is one more. Yeah. yeah. Um, this is an enhancement which is part of converting old forms to React forms. Uh, here, policy profiles form, both add and edit forms are converted to React and Carbon. Next slide, please. Uh, here, these both PRs listed are like very similar earlier alert and action forms doesn't have correct titles like they have something like actions and alerts instead of the new ones um so make sure you fix those in the with the correct titles here i think uh, that's all from ui we have a couple of important prs that got merged into ui but they're more related to provider so adam have those with the screenshot so i don't want to uh, restore the same things again uh, with that over to adam thanks Kavya. Uh, yeah, so this sprint, uh, AutoSDE added a couple of new attributes to uh, their host initiators table. Uh, this was status and uh, host cluster name, so you can get to see that here. Uh, it was added to schema and also added to their uh, refresher in this, in this sprint. Next slide. Uh, for Azure, we added the uh, collection of cloud databases. So uh, in previous sprints, we added RDS and um, and Google, and so this sprint, we added Azure to that. They have support for SQL Server, of course, uh, but also Postgres, MySQL, and uh, MariaDB. So these are all uh, separate collections, but we're modeling them all as one cloud database with different engines, so it's all uh, consistent. Next slide. 
Uh, for Google, we added support for the Google Kubernetes engine. Uh, this is a subclass of our Kubernetes provider. So you get all the, the nice things about that. It has um, update-driven refresh out of the box. Uh, this also uses the same Surface account uh, token as your GCE cloud provider. So if you already have a, uh, a cloud manager uh, for GCE, you can use the same token for your Google Kubernetes engine. Next slide. Uh, for VPC this sprint, we also added the first step of a, a two-step process on IBM Cloud Database Collection. We are getting the uh, simple definitions of what the cloud databases are. And then following up that, we'll add uh, some more information from a different API uh, in an upcoming sprint. We also added a parser for VPC events. Uh, previous sprints, we added the collector for them. Uh, now they're getting parsed and put on the queue so that they'll be uh, usable by targeted refresh uh, in the future. For uh, Power Virtual Servers, we improved the, uh, the refresh by removing some unnecessary volume API calls. Turned out that we could do a single call on the collection uh, to reduce the number of individual one-off volume API gets that we were doing. So that improves, improves the performance of that refresh. Uh, as part of the image import work, we added an image uh, import throttler or dispatcher. Um, this was also tied into some refactoring work that uh, uh, that was done in core to allow this to be pulled out into the uh, provider worker. So in this case, the power team is ensuring that only a single uh, image import is going on from a source and a target at a time so you don't overwhelm the, the system there. Uh, the power team also added a couple of uh, three, I believe, built-in uh, Power VS reports that you can use. So you can see the uh, screenshot of that in the report viewer. Next slide. Hold on. Oops. There you go. Yep. Uh, and rounding out the uh, sprint of cloud databases, we also added Oracle Cloud support. So they have uh, their Oracle database and also MySQL. And so we're collecting uh, both of those here. Next slide. And that's it for providers over to, not Jason, Brent. Yep, and since Jason was out last uh, sprint review as well, we have some updates from Sprint 167. So as part of our large effort to get things off of the MIQ queue, Adam allowed Kafka to be used for EMS events. Um, David made an enhancement to add the JPEG extension to our pictures model. Uh, Jason, added a more comprehensive breakman coverage across all the plugins. Adam added an options call to our endpoints model. Nick L added a database dump, backup, and restore to the appliance console CLI. Adam added HTTPD as a dependency of the UI and API workers, as well as adding memcached as a dependency for EVM server D. And he also fixed um, a missing directory that we had for our Kafka key store directory. Keenan added uh, a removed watchdog update management. So that was some old technical debt that we had for a previous way of updating. And he also fixed the permissions on the descendant loader cache. On to the next slide. Right. Oleg added some supports. So he added smart state analysis to EMS cluster. Right here. Oh, there he is. Yep. And also added check compliance to the compliance mixin. Keenan added allowed for hashes um, in MIQ report conditions. Sorry, my notes just moved. Um, Ilya added columns and properties for health state of cloud volumes. And Liran modified the host initiators listing page. Nick L added a Ansible standard out callback for Ansible runner. Keenan added production directories uh, in git keep. These were things that were previously in scripts that we could add back to the Git repo now that we're packaging only via RPM. Uh, Keenan add, removed the watchdog registration system. So that's some more of the update uh, technical debt that we had. 
Keenan also used the default home, which prevented some permissions issues with uh, our workers not running as root. Adam added an enhancement to only restart memcached when the configuration for memcache changed and not to restart Apache on EVM server startup. Next slide. Nick updated our dependency on the appliance console so that we can take advantage of, this, of some of the uh, enhancements for database backup and restore. And Adam uh, fixed the database YAML permissions so that we can run as non-root. LJ fixed an issue where we were starting the server twice, which wasn't really causing a problem for customers, but it was uh, resulting in errors in the logs. Next slide. So less sprint for the API. Adam added an options call for the collection ID uh, for DDF resource parameters. Gilbert added an options call for cloud networks. Adam added a list and show for cloud database collections. And Nickel allowed filtering via equals sign for array. Next slide. So Joe added a rig task to help developers um, set up logical replication. So that's a lot simpler than it used to be. And Nick L added a spec generator for our migration generator. And Jason added a skip UI update to bin setup and bin update so that you don't have to run all of the web packing and everything if you don't need it. Next slide. So Nick added debugging for Ansible Runner. And Adam split up the jog proxy dispatcher. And I think that's it. For... Yep. Thanks, Brandon. Thanks, Adam. Thanks, Kavya. Um, this brings Sprint 169 to a close. We'll be back in two weeks on September 1st. Uh, this brings Sprint 168 to a close. We'll be back for Sprint 169 in two weeks. And with that, I want to thank everyone, the uh, community, the contributors, and the speakers. And uh, See you soon. Thanks a lot, everyone.